Do you have an accent when you speak English? But gosh, all of your thoughts are in, in English and not in your native language. How is that even possible? Um, English is my my second language, but after living in the United States for most of my life, it's become my main language. However, I, I still have an accent when I speak, but all of my thoughts are in English. It's like sometimes I, I have to think very hard about how to say some of these words in Spanish. How How is that even possible? Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, In the Middle. Are you caught in the middle of two cultures? Uh, in this podcast, I talked about about my experiences living in two or more cultures. Uh, my name is uh, Eddie Minaya. I'm a creative professional living in the uh, Washington, D.C. area. Uh, I was born in Peru and I grew up, but I grew up in this area of Washington, D.C. since the late 80s. Today, I have somebody especially joining me that I respect. I've been listening to him for years and I've seen how popular he's gotten uh, in the communities here in the DC area. He's a radio personality, a public figure, a professional presenter, and he's worked with uh, known artists like Don Omar, Nikki Jam, Camila, Carol G, Sebastian Yatra, and many, many more. Mr. Chris Hypnotic. Chris, welcome. What's going on, man? How's everything? Super happy to be here. So glad we can finally connect. Uh, honor. I really admire what you're doing. I love this whole in the middle. You know, we live in a, uh, us as the first generation or some of us who came to this country, we, we're in the middle. We're in the middle of what our family wants and, and what yeah. we have to live up to here. So super honored to be here. Thank you, man. Yes, I, I feel you. It's uh, I feel in the middle of the whole time. That's the whole reason why I started this podcast. Uh, and I'm honored that you're here. So please tell me a little, a little more about yourself. My my introduction. I know it was not long enough to capture all your accomplishments. Where were you born? Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, what attracted you to be in the communications field? So um, I go by the name of Christopher. That's my full name. You know, most people know me as Mr. Chris Hypnotic, as you say. I was born in La Paz, Bolivia, uh, but my father is from Brazil. My mother's from Bolivia. Um, I immigrated to this country when I was 10, 11 years old, um, looking for a better future as many of us do, but also uh, lost my grandparents in Bolivia, so we really had not much to look forward and there's a lot of situations. That's basically, will be another completely different podcast, what happened there, but got me to this country with my mother and ended up in the communications industry by accident. I dare to say it was by accident, by I was always in the entertainment industry, but as far as communications, I ended up uh, with um, Farruko. I was doing his tour here in oh, the wow. DC Maryland area with him. I was taking him to different radio stations. And then I ended up at this uh, at a radio station. And in that radio station, um, between conversations and you know things that happened and the, some of the things I knew how to do, which was graphic designing, video editing, photography, was they hired me mainly for that part of it first. And then from there, I went on air and I was just excited. I, I'm the type of person basically that I like to take on challenges. I'm not the person that likes to let go of an opportunity just because I might not know it, but doesn't mean mm -hmm. I can't learn it. If there's one thing we know how to do is to learn. Mm -hmm. And you know, at that time, uh, my Spanish wasn't so good, even though <laughs> I was born in a Spanish country, my Spanish wasn't so good. So it was kind of uh, when I was on air, you know, they used to make fun of my, my Spanish accent. So it was kind of funny because um, I had a Spanish accent in English. So when I was in talking Spanish, I had a, like a gringo accent, basically like, you know, too much. Yeah. But, but then at the same time, I think I also had an English accent because, you know, I came from speaking Spanish. So it was it was a little bit of both worlds. So it was a tough situation to find a neutral accent. So that was yes. part of my biggest challenges when I entered this thing. So and that's kind of I've been doing work with the many artists, as you mentioned. I've been in the Grammys, the billboards. Um, I mean, if we sit here and talk about the accomplishments that I've done, I think we wouldn't be here. But if anybody wants to know more about what I've done, 
can simply just go to my website, mrchrisignati.com. One of the biggest things I did do is uh, that I'm always so proud of saying it is that I was part mm -hmm. of, uh, there were there's articles of me on Yahoo Finance, on Associate Press and things like that. So those were some of uh greatest uh, accomplishments in the communication but we can go days or days but i don't think we're here to talk about that today <laughs> that, that could be in another situation so i don't want to bore people with what i've done uh, and yeah, but you know okay. i'm always open for questions when it comes to that well you know i'm always the, it's always interesting to kind of listen to someone's how they started in a specific field and how they maybe you know you end up like doing what you're doing today and how you got the popularity that you have today um so it's 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 nice to hear for anyone that wants to start in in a career like this you know to kind of know that it's possible to do um you did mention that your dad was from brazil right so do you speak a little portuguese uh as well let's, as let's just say that he wasn't too much around to learn the portuguese you okay. know me and him have a great relationship so i want to make that clear because you know i don't ever want to make it seem i love my father but he mm -hmm. wasn't really there for me. I didn't grow up in that in that field of the port the Portuguese, you know. My Brazilian okay. side of the family was kind of always like not there, not in my life, I guess. Okay. Um, so the reason I was asking is because if you speak three languages, then it's like, man, what 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 happens in your I head? Do. You know, because <laughs> I do speak three languages. I speak Spanish, English, and sometimes bullshit. It's like ah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> well, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes four man, I have to speak Caucasian. You know, when we were working in this Yo, industry, you know, we, we go from the "Hey, what up, bro?" to "How you doing, ma'am?" <laughs> hey, what up, bro? Yeah, you know, yeah, you gotta I know how. You. So that's four. That's like different languages nowadays, brother. It is. It is. I, I deal a lot with uh, government officials and government people. So it's like you have to tone it down. So sometimes if you feel that I have this mellow sort of vibe, it's because of the industry that I work with and the people that I work with. But that, yeah, I, I, I hear you. You've been calcursionized, I call them. You, know, you have to learn <laughs> to keep that, that level of tone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, then, my my wife doesn't help. She's also Caucasian. So it's like, um, oh, I man. Guess, <laughs> yeah, definitely you know i understand but deep in there you know the peruvian in you is it's kind of it, it's got that you know how to cook sorry that i, I jump on it Do you know how to cook because you got to be peruvian. um i am but i know how to eat i don't know how to cook much you know so when i have to cook something i always have to like, call my mom and says mom how do you do this or you know i just run to the restaurant i don't cook much you know i always wanted to cook more but i just it was it's never there's a few things that i it's just like and people do make fun of me because saying you can't cook you can't do manual work because i'm not good at it it's not that i can't do it it's just i'm not but good you're good at, at other stuff though but i'm good at other you, stuff what you right? live what you live in i relate yeah. to you one thousand percent because i and one fun fact that i asked about the peruvian thing is because my daughter is half peruvian oh okay oh yeah, so okay so you know yeah. what it's oh uh, so you're oh i, I, I know man yeah. <laughs> I, know. I know about la ji de gallina bro what's up i know man oh, that's one of my wife's favorite yeah ji de gallina ceviche lomo saltado oh man you're bro, making let's me not talk now. about food man yeah, no no <laughs> let's keep going because you know we're, we're, we're gonna get to to talk about food is gonna be a never-ending topic <laughs> yeah so chris tell, tell us all your social media channels for anyone listening so they can follow you um you mentioned your website what are your you have a facebook page you have a, an instagram page i'm everywhere just simply go to my website, mrchrisimnati.com, and that way you don't have to look for it. But if you do want to search one by one, maybe you use one more than the other. On Instagram, I'm on Mr. Chris Hypnotic. On TikTok, the same, Mr. Chris Hypnotic. Facebook, Mr. Chris Hypnotic. Uh, those are the three that I use the most. Now I'm using a little bit more YouTube. Uh, we got, you know, the new the YouTube shorts, so I got into it. So mm -hmm. now I'm more on YouTube. You can find me as well on uh, Mr. Chris. You can find me on all those platforms as Mr. Chris Hypnotic. Okay. Is anyone, if anyone listening in YouTube and uh, for this podcast, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, his description and his handles in, in there too. So you can kind of link from there. Um, and I know you, you also have, um, you're doing a podcast. Tell us a little more of what the podcast or what you're doing. Um, and I know that's not exactly what we're here to talk about, but I want people to know who you are and the things that you're doing. So I've been doing radio for the past 12 years and, you know, I did, I've always found in radio that we had a very short amount of time with, you know, when you want to talk to somebody about what they've done, motivation. There's so many great stories out there of people mm -hmm. who are not necessarily what you think they are. Maybe they come mm -hmm. from a different background when 
they weren't what many thought they are they were going to be today so i decided to create a space where i can relate to those people who maybe at one point even their family thought they weren't going to be anything in life and maybe we're just going to be some bums or drug addicts mm -hmm. or gang members or anything among those lines but they turned their life around and now today they're being successful throughout social media, their careers, their their work and everything. So I'm trying to connect with different people like that who also have a successful story for sure, but they all come they don't all come from just success. And I relate to that because I come from mm -hmm. that. So you can't tell that story in two, three minutes. That's yes. kind of why like at the beginning of an introduction, I couldn't give you everything I've done in a couple of seconds because it's it's so much to it because there's so much passion in my life and what I've done and have gotten here that I decided to create El Brunch Online. El Brunch Online. The brunch is known in DC, very well known. It's one of the best brunches in the world that are here in DC. I also have an event, uh, I'm part of an event uh, with my best friend. We have this event called Bachata Brunch DC. And we've been able to identify that brunch is a place where it's like a free comfort zone because you connect food, drinks, and friends. And mm -hmm. there's always a story to be told. I've met so many different people through that. So, you know, I was like, hey, you know, what's something that you can kind of joke around, have fun, but also have a powerful situation or concept or meeting or motivation messaging that it can feel relaxed, but at the same time, you can enjoy it. So that's where brunch was born. I believe that breakfast and lunch, best of both worlds, connecting one. And that's the way I'm doing it with the the different guests, two worlds, the before and the after. And we're here today doing, you know, a couple of episodes, continue to build. And we're now growing at brunchonline.com. That's the website where you can find everything on. So I'm doing video audio. I'm on iHeartRadio. I'm on Spotify and the other platforms. And you know, just looking forward to have, uh, to be able to give an opportunity to some people to just tell the story, man. I believe that mm -hmm. that's super important. Like you are giving yeah. me the opportunity to talk to you yeah, to me, it's very valuable because I believe any chance you can get, you know, I'm happy with one person just being, hey, I relate to that. I made a difference in my life. I already made, I made a difference. I made an impact. So I fulfilled my legacy, as I call. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well said, uh, Chris. So we, um, you know, in the last episode, I, I talked about, um, <laughs> about Hispanic moms uh, and how they treat their sons differently. Um you know, I got quite a few comments and responses regarding this topic from both male and female. And, and as I mentioned to, to uh, anyone listening, that this is just really my point of view and my experience. I'm not an expert in any of these areas. But if you're interested in listening in that, um, in that last episode, um, I streamed it podcast via YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. So you can search for In the Middle Podcast. Are you caught in two cultures? And you, you'll be able to find it. So today we're going to be shifting gears again, and uh, we're going to talk about about um, accents. I think Chris, you already touched base a little bit about when you first were growing up that you had an accent when you uh, when you spoke uh, Spanish, but you also had an accent when you spoke English. You know, and um, for for us, some of us, we we speak. I still speak with with a slight accent. So as you're probably hearing me right now, you know right off the bat that I'm not a native English speaker because I have a slight accent, but some of the words for me are still very difficult to pronounce, very hard to pronounce. I have to kind of think of the sound before I, I say to before I say them and before I pronounce them in order to, to make him sound better or to make him sound more more native. And sometimes they still come out wrong. Uh, for example, for me, the words like Georgetown, man, that combination of words seems like very hard for me to 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 say it. Uh, or and I really have to think about how to say it before I say it. Or words like Safeway. I know that seems maybe easy for some, but I I can really easily mispronounce the uh, the word, and sometimes I have to think again really hard about how how to say it. Um, I know there is um, in uh, Gabriel Iglesias Fluffy there was a um, uh, comedy uh, act that I I heard a few days ago, and he was mentioning uh, something about how um, he was not making fun, but he was saying how Hispanic people sometimes say the word sprite or pizza. Uh, which is spray or pizza, and you know, and I know this is true because I've heard it personally from from relative. But at least I, I think I, my accent, it's it's not it's over overcome sprite and pizza. But you know, I still have some. Uh, Chris, what do you think? I mean, since you grew up in the United States, what do you think? And is you know, what do you think when you're speaking in English? I mean, or, or in Spanish? I mean, do you kind of get confused between your thoughts? Uh, do you think you still have an accent today when you speak English? 
first of all i love accents i used to <laughs> have a you know thing with you know i think that that was just put in our heads because you know people always made fun of but i learned to i learned to embrace it i've mm -hmm. learned to enjoy it whether one thing i love even imitating accents myself from different countries i've made it into something that i do for fun like because i meet so many different from different countries especially in spanish people don't understand that in spanish there's different accents yes. so yep. we're just talking about you know I definitely had an have an accent, and I've been told, "Oh, your accent is so cute." I'm like, "Yeah, girl, my accent is cute." So it's like a plus thing, you know what I mean? But there's also those people who are like, "Oh, you have an accent." You. So at the end of the day, I personally embrace it. I, I definitely, you know, have situations where I don't even know how to say the word. Like when mm -hmm. I do quinceañeras, they hire me a lot to do like bilingual quinceañeras, and sometimes mm -hmm. I get the names, and I'm like, "Bro," <laughs> like I be going to the girls or the guys. So what's your last name? Switzerland, uh, <laughs> uh, how do you say your name? Hold on, how do you, and I'll go back 50 <laughs> times so I don't mess up their name. And I used to be so obsessed with that and impressed because I didn't want to mess up on their like, you know, the, the ceremony or something like that. And I would understand. Yeah. Uh, but then eventually I've learned, and I'm gonna be honest, that sometimes I just be like, I'll, I'll like slubber. I'll be like, Michael, is the right one? You know, just because <laughs> I don't know how to say it, bro. Like, that's not, that's just the situation, you know? But um, I do see, I do see that, you know, sometimes you, you wanna say something in English, but you can only think of the word in Spanish. Or if mm -hmm. you wanna say something in Spanish, but you can only think the word in English. Oh, and, yes, I, man. and I think that has to do with your mark, with your field of work too. Because mm -hmm. there might be things like for me in marketing that I did not know how to say in Spanish because I learned mm -hmm. more all my marketing stuff in English, all the terminology mm -hmm. and the proper way of speaking about it. So when mm -hmm. I would go to talk to somebody in Spanish, I'd be like, wow, how, how do I, what? You know, and it would always be like, hey, you know, we're looking for the, eh, estamos buscando por las eh, eh, impressions, you know, impressions, you know, the numbers. Uh, <laughs> how do you say that in Spanish? Like. And I would just go in, in those lines, but with accents, I definitely think I, I still do because I've been told. Um, I don't know if I do. I really don't care if I do. I enjoy, I embrace it. I'm proud. I'm honored to, to be in this country, but I am Hispanic. I do come from uh, Bolivia. I was born in another country, so I've learned the language now. Yes, yeah. I think I can imitate the, the, the English accent more. Like I literally have a, per a character like that I'll be making when I do like sometimes on my stories and I pretend to be Peter, right? So I'm like, oh, there, this is Peter there to you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so my accent disappears. But, you know, it's it's just that that beauty of being able to to uh, know so many cultures and mm -hmm. understand them like you you just talked on a topic that i love because i just saw for instance uh, there's the english colombian accent there's the english yes indian accent there's the english african accent there's the english arabic accent so i mean at the end of the day accents yep. are just cool man it's, it's like a cultural thing so i, I embrace them mm, that's good yeah i mean i I'm glad to hear because I try to do the same in, in my field and try to embrace it. And, you know, you, you did bring up a good point. It's like sometimes you can tell the where the person is from by their accent, but I'm not referring to being Asian or a Middle Eastern country. I'm talking about which Latin America region they're from. So, for example, if you hear someone from Colombia speaking English, you may be able to know where like their, their English accent may be different from someone that is from El Salvador. Uh, it's or someone from Bolivia, Peru, that sometimes is specific words, sometimes there are specific things, but I do. Tones. That must the be tones. the tones. Yeah. Must be the tones because it's like, yeah, I, I know. It's like I've heard the way, you know, Colombians say it like that. It's like, hey, you must be from Colombia. And then you, you second, you, 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 you know, you hear their, their Spanish accent when they speak Spanish and like, oh, yeah, you are from Colombia, you are from El Salvador, you are from, you know, Bolivia, you are from Peru. So yeah, it's interesting to know that, it, that I'm not the only one that kind of observes this. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that you share the same point of view and that you, the same observations that I, that I've done it seems like you you, <laughs> you have the same point of view so um you know one thing chris that i can tell you access can sometimes i've noticed that it can also label people um to be and this is you know that they, they can be incapable of doing a job or a task because they're they're thinking with an accent i've heard that that um 
that phrase uh, before. Uh, but the matter of fact is that their accent has to me nothing to do with their knowledge or abilities. From a point of view, a person with an accent already knows more than someone that speaks a single language because they can communicate in two different languages to two different audiences, to two different cultures, possibly. Um, so it becomes even to them to know more. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on this since you deal with, you know, artists and famous people, perhaps, you know, English might not be their first language. Do you think they even like artists, do you think they struggle with, uh, uh, with, you know, the, I'm talking about artists that may not have English as their first language, that they struggle with music executives, maybe even getting, you know, a better, not as a good record deal with, uh, uh, compared to someone that speaks English perfectly or, uh, do you think that doesn't happen in that industry? See, the thing is, in general, and I'm not going to only say within the artist, mm -hmm. that doesn't define you. That doesn't define how capable you are. I believe that if somebody has the mentality to tell you that because you have an accent, you might not be able to execute a job, I think that person's already failing at whatever they're doing because they're not being open-minded to the potential this other person has in the growth, mm -hmm. if that person is capable to use their brain to a higher level to speak two languages and still be able to apply for a job that you think they can do, but they know they can, it's already mm -hmm. as it is right there. I will give that person hiring another look more than I would worry about the person getting the job done. And also, if we think about it here in the United States, how many corporations have call centers which are not even in the United States? When you call your company for your phone, yeah. for any, anything, they're answering you in India, they're answering you in Colombia, and they all have accents. And th yep. this, that doesn't seem to be a barrier for somebody to get their job done as since fixing an issue. You are still sitting there and trying to get your cell phone bill fixed when they overcharge you, and you're managing to understand this person because they are getting the job done. They're the people that are going to get the job done, right? So, yeah. um, I, I believe it's maybe an excuse for somebody to say that, but I believe that it doesn't define what job you can do. When it comes to the artists, there's artists who are, let's go, let's switch it up, who speak only English and have done songs in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And they don't even sound like they have an accent, as you want to call it, because they prepare, recorded it. There's different ways, technology and everything will make you sound like you speak it perfectly and fluently. Flip it the other way. If you're in the, you know, in the Spanish market, you want to do something in English, it's also not that hard. You know, the pronunciation when you record is pause. As if we were to do this podcast and try to pronounce every single word and record it piece by piece, it will sound like we perfect. We speak perfectly uh, because of editing, right? So that's mm -hmm. where the world we stand. So limitation as far as accent. If mm -hmm. limit, there's no limitation as far as language. There's people who don't even speak the language English here in this country and are successful. You're going to tell me someone who actually speaks it because of their accent is not going to be able to achieve the job. I just think it's ridiculous for someone to even think that way because it mm, doesn't make any yeah. sense. I can't find any possible way. And I'm sure there is different, mm -hmm. but I don't think it has to do with the accent. I think it just has to do with uh, their mentality and in in how they are being working or having their company maybe and what they're looking for i think that the the, mm -hmm. the description of their, they're looking you know it's like if i wanted to have a a call center with a girl with a nice voice i know i'm looking for a girl with a nice voice that sounds really nice or let's go with colombia accent colombia accent is one of the most likable accents from medellin <laughs> people love that you know mm -hmm. pues, man, eh, eh, you know all that romantic <laughs> stuff you have you want to hire some girl that sounds like that because you want your customers to feel that certain type of way you're gonna find that type of look so i think it's more of on the description of any job you gotta make sure if that's one of the things that you're looking for and you know that you don't have mm -hmm. that that's different it doesn't mean it's yeah. gonna limit you from getting the job done yeah well said you know my, my point is that i think when you hear someone with an accent don't don't judge them i think you you, you already said that you were eventually get used to you were a if you work with someone that has a really heavy accent, eventually you get used to the sounds and you will be able to understand that the, the person better. Um, I work with a lot if of people text, with different backgrounds. Just text. Yes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> just text. I mean, we live in a world where people barely talk. Just text. What's the limitation then? There's no accent in texting or yeah. emailing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe you just text them and there you go. It's done. Yeah, Auto-correct everything, you know? <laughs> Some people with an accent have better uh, writing than the people who they actually do. don't have an accent. They do. They do. They do. They do. I just, you know, you I've make a very that. good point. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I'm not sure, I guess. <laughs> that is true. 
Um, you know, but have you, you know, one thing is that I can tell you is I, you know, I have an accent, but it's like difficult for me to under, to, to explain to somebody that even though, uh, you know, I have an accent, my, my thoughts are just in a different language. So it's hard for me to, to, to understand like my, my thoughts, 95% are all in English. I have to, to reverse when I have to speak Spanish because I have to translate almost things. And at some point that happened in my head, but now that happens now. Um, do you, do you, does, does this happen to you? Like, do you have your thoughts in English and it kind of wraps up and, and you have to translate sometimes in Spanish or when you have to speak Spanish, do you have some sort of switch that you were able to switch? Because not everyone can do it. I, I can't. I can switch pretty easily and also um, I can translate as I go. So okay. I can, because of my, you know, I've learned to be very Spanglish, so I can have a conversation with you. And as I'm telling you a story, I can literally go almost word by word and from Spanish to English and tell you the same story. Like, you know, uh, I mean, an example, like, let's say, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think what I can give you an example on, like, So let's talk about like let's talk about what happened with the World Cup and Messi, right? So if I were to tell mm -hmm. you the story, like so it's like, you know, so Messi won the World Cup, Messi acaba de ganar la Copa Mundial, and he was over there super happy, you know, made a lot of goals, estaba super feliz, hizo muchos goles. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. then at the same time he encountered himself in a tough situation. Se encontró una situación muy dificultosa, and he was there, and Saul Babe came and tried to grab a picture from him. Y ahí vino el famoso uh -huh. chef Saul Baby, vino y le robó una foto. Everything there was all chaotic, it was drama. Todo fue caos, fue dramático, and it was all over the news the next day. Estuvo por todas las noticias todo el próximo día. And there you go. Now we have some TMC. Y ahí tenemos alguna noticia de TMC. You see, kind of like, I can do that. It's I can wow, pop, pop, yeah. pop, go back and forth. Well, that is some talent because I, I as you were trying, you were speaking, and I'm, I'm trying to translate what you're saying, and it was just like I lost you halfway through. It's like it was hard to catch up. So, <laughs> your mind, man, you're you must be having, a, I guess, because you can switch so easy. It's easy for you to do it. I find translating challenging. Just to give you an example, last week I was translating some credit card information for my mom. And I had to translate documentation terms, right, that um, from English to Spanish. But then I had to, tr to find the words in Spanish to put these terms that I'm translating from English to Spanish so that they make sense for her. So it was just like a translation highway in my head to translate from English to Spanish. And that's because all my thoughts are in English. So and I know it sounds confusing and I might not have an accent when I speak Spanish. But it is harder for me to, especially if, if, if the, you know, if I'm translating any, anything, that's a little bit, anything. That's a little bit different, I think. And I, and I think you're, it's not that you're not capable of doing it. It's, you also mm -hmm. got to understand those are terms that you're probably not dealing with every day. Yeah. That's Either, true. or, you know, you're reading off a paper. There might be some terms in there that in English that you don't normally use them even. So there, yeah, mm -hmm. how are you supposed to know them in Spanish? And I know that because a friend of mine was applying for a job as a, to do translation for a school. And there were some terms there that I was looking at it because I looked at what they were giving him to like test on. And I was like, whoa, like those are terms that, you know, mm. even if I were to tell my mom or anybody, they will not understand it because it just makes no sense how they, they it's said in Spanish if you translate it by the book. So sometimes you have to translate it with in a way where whoever you translate into, they understand. Now, mm -hmm. if you're doing like legal documents, it has to be by the book because of course it's legal documents. You have to completely be, but you can always add that little, you know, uh, with, we as a Hispanic, we have so many ways of saying one thing. I mean, yeah. you'll make it understood, but legally I know in, in a more like documentation contracts and things like that, the, the translation has to be as accurate on the word because of the terminology. So on that end, that's where you run into credit card information and stuff like that, because the terminology is, you know, what might mean one thing in English might not mean nothing at all in Spanish. So yeah. you have to find something close to it. And that's nothing to do with the translation. That's more on you researching the field. Like, I'm sure that if you weren't going to the medical field and translate from English to Spanish or from Spanish mm -hmm. to English, The terminology will be completely crazy for you because you're not in the medical field. You're not dealing with those words every day. So that's yeah. that changes the game a little bit more. That's why people literally, for translation, I think you need to educate yourself first on the field you're going to translate and then mm -hmm. become a translator. You can't just translate everywhere, anything, because every terminology is not in your vocabulary every day. 
Yeah. You know, a, a few years ago, I, I met a, a speech therapist who told me that as human beings, and again, this is just what she told me, so I don't know how true it is, but that we develop our languages early in our lives. You know, by the time you're, and by the time you're eight to 10, your brain has already developed the, the language and you'll be able to learn the sounds of the language that you, that you learned first. Um, so when you learn a language, a second language, after you try to make the, the new language that you're learning make it sound like the language that you start learning first. But, you know, when you, so when you come as a, as a kid or you, like you say, you came at the age of 10 and your, your accent, for example, it's even more, it's lighter than, than my accent. So what I can tell you is, is it maybe because of the age that you came? I came when I was, uh, I moved here when I was 13. So I might have come over that little threshold where my brain was already set on a certain language. So now learning English afterwards is I try to make it sound like some words in Spanish, even though, you know, maybe I don't speak as much Spanish as I should. But at the same time, mm -hmm. it's it's a uh, uh, it's just it just it's just confusing. Um, I mean, do, do you see any of your family members or friends that migrated to the United States as kids? Do you, do you agree with what I'm saying that when they come younger, you know, between like before 10 or younger, that their accent is less or sometimes not even noticeable? So I think you 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 have a great point and I think you're right. And I'm going to use myself an example. When I moved here from Bolivia, I wasn't aware that I was even going to stay. I thought I was coming for vacation, right? So then mm -hmm. they threw me in a school where I was the only Hispanic. In a middle mm -hmm. school, I was the only Hispanic. The person that was helping me, she was Brazilian. <laughs> so I was forced to learn English because I had no choice. And right. I was quick and everybody around me spoke perfect. Their accents were super great. So I was influenced by the sounds. I don't know how familiar you are, but I, I have like two, I have three kids, but my little ones, which are the most recent ones that I've been, you know, I can remember from when they mm -hmm. teach them how to read and stuff, it's all about the sight words and sight words have sounds. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how your brain starts to uh, capture these sounds and learns to speak them and there's the accents are gone and they learn to, you know, read and etc. So when you see something, because you learn the sight sound, you might be able to complete the, the word or the phrase or whatever. So mm -hmm. I think that's also how it works for us. Uh, not sure how right I am because I don't remember exactly the age, but I know there's a specific age where they say is the best time for, you know, your kids to learn um, different languages because they'll be able yeah. to pick it up faster, right? Fast. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people are like, no, you got to teach your kids, like the whole thing with, you know, being Hispanic and your kids not knowing Spanish and everybody's <laughs> saying, what, your kids don't know Spanish? And I'm like, wait, they're trying to learn English. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to teach them Spanish? <laughs> Let them learn their side words with their, you know, so I've chose to not stop them from learning in Spanish, but I'm like, they're learning the Spanish from their grandma, their tias, who mm -hmm. don't speak English. And I mm -hmm. let them, I'm like, talk to them in Spanish. Don't talk to them in English. Mm -hmm. You're going to do that part. They're going to learn the sounds, the sights, and the, you know, and they're eventually going to put two and two together. And then in English, that's what they have the school for. That's where they're learning their side words. They're learning, you know, how to pronounce, how to read all these things in English. And eventually, as my older daughter got, as my oldest daughter got older, I saw that. She wasn't mm -hmm. speaking Spanish very much when she was like maybe four or five. But guess what? Now she's 15 and she speaks mm -hmm. both very well, reads them. And it's oh, wow. a process. It's a process in the in the go because I wasn't that parent that was extremely hard on her, and I've learned to uh, to read and educate myself a little bit on it. I'm not against mm -hmm. this, so I don't want nobody listening thinking, "Oh no, you don't want your kids to speak Spanish." No, it's not that. <laughs> I'm just saying that sometimes it's more than just the pressure. It's more of you know how you how they their, their learning process is. Like mm -hmm. I'm a visual learner. I, mm -hmm. I don't like reading. So don't give me a reading book, but if you give me a book on audio, I will listen to the audio book. But you give me a book to read, I'm, I'm gonna fall asleep. I'm gonna be so honest. Or if you want me to understand something, don't type it for me, show me, and I'll learn it in a heartbeat. So, yeah. you know, we all have different ways of learning, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So going back to what you were saying, just wanted to use that as an example is, it could be difficult uh, if you're not around the people, that, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not around too many people that speak Spanish, because you don't have the sounds around you. And if you're not around a lot of people that speak English, you might yeah. also have a bigger accent because of that, because you're not hearing how they're pronouncing the words. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
and that also has an influence. It's the same thing as any other accent. When you go to Puerto Rico, all of a sudden you come back talking about <laughs> go like Puerto Rico. You go to the Dominican Republic, and then you come back, hello, que mani diablo esa vaina. You're like, bro, you were there for like three days. What are you talking about? Like, no, mani, que yo soy dominicano. Ah, and then you're like, bro. It, it, it stuck on you because you like the sound. It's all sounds. We live in a world where a lot of things are sound related. Our brain operates through the things we hear, the things yeah. we see, the things we smell, the taste, the things we taste. That's why we have all these things. So you have to be able to accommodate to that. And I think some people are just close minded to it, and that's why they have a problem with accents. I agree. You know, and <clears throat> sometimes this, um, you know, I always ask the questions like to myself, how does this affect like speaking, you know, with my elders, like my mom, my aunts, someone that only primarily speaks Spanish and their English is, they speak English only if they need to. And man, I can tell you, it's, it's like I mentioned the example of the translation of the, of the credit card, but it is very, to me, very, it's very hard it becomes a... You know, there, I think you you already mentioned some of the things, but I like I've learned technical terms in English only. So trying to translate those words, and I'm going to give you a few examples like files, windows, mouse, keyboard, cursor, megabytes, settings, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. I mean, if I tell you translate all of those, it's good. You're going to stop and start thinking, it's just, how do I how do I say files? You know, like I've learned how to say files from a Colombian guy that. Uh, And I, I had even in Spanish sounds funny because he calls it archivos, and I don't know if that's still the right way, but I that think is. that's how it, that is how how it's called. So, but I, you know, for me that sounds odd because that's not how I learned it. Um, but what some of these terms maybe call the same in Spanish, you know, sometimes because I learn it in a different way. I think you you already Documentos. brought that up. It's like documents, files, files. People use files ah, and they call it documentos. Ah. Well, you know, that's one of the, other, yeah, yeah, that, I guess that's another way to say it. And I think you, sometimes you have to find alternate words to say the same thing in order to be understood. I remember the first time I heard the word Wi-Fi and I was in Peru when I, when that happened <laughs> and I was, and I was like, I think I was like, I was like, does that, does that mean Wi-Fi? You know, that's inside my head. Is it new Wi-Fi? Is it a nickname for the word Wi-Fi? Is it just a fun way to call it? Are they making fun of me because they're calling it Wi-Fi? Because, I, you know, I live in the United States. But, you know, that's how they say it. And, you know, this again, this happened to me when I was in Peru. And I'm sure I look like a fool with a face I put when they go, uh, when it was at a hotel, they were calling me, the, giving me the, the Wi-Fi password. But that's how they say it. Dame uh, pr printear. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, yeah, and then when you say words like parquear, you know, parking, and then they know it's like automatically, oh, you know, you know this dude is not from here. But you, they understand what you're saying, but they, they know that you're not you're not from there. So I know you, you transmit the, the Carnaval uh, de Oruro in Santa Cruz in Bolivia live. So when you do it, um, do you, and when you were there, do you encounter challenges in communicating with the local people about your equipment? you know, professional terms related to your field? No, not at all, man. Um, I, I can't tell you that I have any issues with that. I have, I don't think I've encountered it because um, most people, the influence of the, the American market in the world, at least in Latin America, I think is pretty major. So mm -hmm. they all understand. You'll be surprised like how many terms now they're using in our countries that are very similar to the, they're basically English, you know, like uh, I go and like I hear them say things and I'm like, wait, what? But that's not how you say, you know, they be like, yeah, like, for instance, like, I remember going back to Bolivia and two friends of mine, they're like, yeah, so must BFFs. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> BFFs? ¿Qué es eso? You know, I'm thinking like, BFFs como like mejores amigas? Yeah, BFFs. Yeah. Uh, are, are bad words allowed here or not? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, like, it's open. for instance, like, mira ese fuckboy. What? Oh, ese wow. fuckboy. <laughs> you know, like, there's, because of the influence of social media, Yeah. people have learned certain terms, like gigabytes. They know what gigabytes is. Uh, you know, memory. They know, like, if you're talking about a phone, iPhone, uh, you mm -hmm. know, 
they, you talk about like you know the quality and the three, los tres, you know the the how good the picture is, the HDR or anything. They'll understand you because they they want an iPhone. They're curious. They know that that's you know. Oh, tiene buen night vision. Okay, night vision. <laughs> what? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like you know they because when that's just how they you know if anything on TV like any songs and music they'll hear it and you know and I'm like. Well, you yeah. know, that's the influence. So you can actually, they can actually relate to it. And I think that's the beauty of where social media has also had done because now people are learning different terminologies. You know, people have, um, I'm sure right now, whoever's listening or watching, they're thinking of a thousand words that <laughs> probably their friends, family, or somebody has said in English back home when they went and they were like, what? How do you know yeah. that? Yeah. Or why yeah. are you even using that? You know? And I think that's now. But if you're going back years, maybe when you were 13, when I was, you know, 11, it was probably a lot much different because social media wasn't so large. I think the only people had ac access to this terminology were people maybe with a little higher standard in their economy, if you want to say. They had, you know, but their family was, I don't know, in the United States or things like that. Like mm -hmm. I remember Jay Balvin, for instance, used to say that he got his Air Force Ones, right? Like they asked him mm -hmm. at the complex interview, they're like, yeah, he's like, yeah, my first night shoes were white Air Force Ones. And he, and they're like, but how did you learn about it? He's like, Nelly, when he came out with the Air Force One songs, <laughs> he would say that. So I, I thought it was so cool. So I wanted the Air Force Ones. And then my cousin in New York sent me the Air Force Ones and I had the white Air Force Ones. But Nelly is the one that put on Air Force Ones because he had a song about it. So that influence of that song in the culture over there made them mm -hmm. what? by Air Force Ones, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an influence that we have. It's all work by influence, brother. It's, I think everything within the community and the culture now has a certain type of influence, your accent, who you, who, you know, how you sound, who you're around. Like I was mm -hmm. a lot around Dominicans at one point and my mom used to be like, you're not Dominican, why are you talking like that? <laughs> you know, I was in Spanish talking to her like, mommy, tu sabes que lo que, el famoso, ya tu sabes. She'd be like, ya tu sabes what? You're in Dominican, you're in Puerto Rican, why are you saying that? Yo no sé nada, you know, and it just comes with that, you know, and I could have been like, ya tu sabes normally, but I had to say like a Dominican, ya tu sabes, you know, just to sound like them, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, as I get older, my hey, my kids also. I have two two kids that are older. One is 27, one is 23, and they struggle the other Wait, way. Wait, what? Trying you have kids 27 and 23? Uh huh. Yeah, 27, 23. You don't look. I thought you were like 28, bro. Like 30. You don't look <laughs> old, man. No, nah, man. I'm a little little older than 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 my than 28. But yeah, I have a kid that's 27 and 23, and their Spanish is not the greatest. But they, you know, they, they try and they struggle to pronounce words in Spanish. And I can understand the struggle because they under, they're struggling the other way, trying to speak in, in Spanish. So I can identify with, with, their, with their struggle. Um, you know, and practice makes perfection. So, you know, at some point, if they want to take it more serious, I think they need to be able to, to, um, to learn. To, they, wanna, they need to take the initiative to learn it more. Uh, my older son take he does he lives in, in in a different state, but he calls my mom to make sure that he doesn't lose his Spanish. So That's because great. my mom will, will speak Spanish only to 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 him, so he calls her as to make sure he can uh, keeps the Spanish going, so he doesn't uh, he doesn't lose it. Um, no, that's you that's know. Great. Yeah, so you know the message here, I think, is is really we need not to judge people by their accents. We have no idea of their stories, especially if you we don't know what's going through their heads. I mean, you just gave me a few examples of what's going through your head, and I was, you know, I'm amazed and at the same time dizzy to know what happens inside of your translation mind, man, because you have so much happening, um, you know. And I, that's why I ask myself, is like, what happens when you're when you have uh, when you speak three languages, and you know, I. I have uh, my brother-in-law is from Brazil, my sister is Peruvian, and my nephews speak English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Um, wow. I, you know, I'm curious to find out what goes through their head because English is their first language because they were born and raised here. Spanish and Portuguese is technically their second language, but what comes second? What comes third? I don't know. It's 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 confusing, but I think as you learn more languages, it's interesting to. Uh, you know, to know how, how, what happens inside of your, what are your thoughts like? Because it has to become more, more and more confusing. 
Um, so for anyone listening, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. Um, this uh, podcast is streamed via YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Search for uh, In the Middle Podcast. Are you caught in two cultures? Uh, and Chris, I, I want to thank you for taking the time for being here. It was uh, very exciting to to learn more about you, your accomplishments, uh, to you know all the and all the crazy thoughts that happen inside of your head and my head. Um, so uh, thank you for, 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 for being here and thank you for taking the time. No, I appreciate you having me before anything and moving forward. You know, you mentioned something. I think the lesson here is not to judge anybody by their accent, but I think the lesson is more than just the accent. I believe I'm very big on a zero judgment zone. I love having an area where, you know, I don't think no one should be judged by anything. We all have different life stories and mm -hmm. we all have problems and we all deal with them differently. So the number one thing to make a difference in today's world is not to be so judgmental. And I believe that that's important. So this is one way of kind of educating people and having an open conversation of our thoughts about a topic that maybe some people don't even dare to even conversate about because they fear they might be judged, number one thing. So thank you for creating this topic. Thank you for opening this space for us to conversate on on this that we talked today. And be, be proud of your accent. Be be happy, be you, and you know, obstacles are there. And you said something very important. Don't forget, uh, you know, what you were taught or where you come from. So, like your son goes and calls back your mom to get that, you know, I guess practice on the Spanish so he doesn't forget mm -hmm. it. It's the mm -hmm. best way. That's an amazing example you gave right there. And I think that's something that we all should do, whether it's in English or in Spanish. Surround ourselves with that. Pay people to speak more English if we, we don't have an issue in Spanish. Or vice versa, if you speak more Spanish, surround yourself with people who speak more English or, you know, either way. So um, I think it was amazing. Thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate you. I'm looking forward to sharing and sending all this out to people because I think we're going to have a lot of response from it. And my best wishes to you. And remember, I'm always here. Whenever you want to have me, I would love to be here. And I would love to have you on my podcast as well. So we're going to make the public and know. And I want to have you. And we're going to talk. I want to get to know you a little bit more. I think you're getting, I see there's a lot. Uh, you're very much um, a structure with everything that you do. And I admire that from you. So thank you. And uh, until next time. Thank you. Yeah, until next time. So check back and listen to uh, if you know any more topics and reach out if you have any questions and talk to you. Talk to everybody soon. Thank you.